Being at CPPCon has been amazing because you can directly speak with the experts. I've had conversations with Bjorn Strusep, with Sean Parent, and they're all very friendly and accessible and willing to give their opinions or advice on C++. Hello, I am Jefferson. Let's talk about unundefining undefined behavior. So undefined behavior, or UB, is when the spec does not define some behavior, and so the compiler is free to do anything. So um, really, it's kind of grammatically dubious to talk about that, because the behavior was never defined. So really, this whole talk is UB. Um, so here's an example of UB. We are type punning, treating a foo as if it were a bar. Here's another type punning example. It's the famous quake inverse square root, and we're treating a float as if it were an int. And then here's some uh, signed integer overflow. So let's see what we can do about this. This is UB. We're treating a foo as if it were a bar, and it does segfault. So I'll show you something that doesn't work to just illustrate what some of the problems are. Let's say we put in a if statement so that if that if statement is run, then the behavior is defined. That does not work because the compiler's smart enough to figure out that uh, if it's not run, you still have UB and it still segfaults. But there are other things we can do. Like uh, we can factor out the cast and put it into a library. Now when the library is compiled, the cast is fine. And when main is compiled, for all the compiler knows, get bar could return a bar object. And so after putting foo and bar into libraries for good measure, we get foo. So we've unundefined this behavior by setting up a situation where the compiler can't tell that it's UB. So now let's look at integer overflow. This is uh, another example. So here uh, the compiler outputs no overflow. Um, skip this, doesn't matter. What we're gonna do is pass the address of our integer, which is in max, into a function. And this function doesn't do anything, it just returns its argument. But um, so the compiler understands this, and it still optimizes the, um, the program uh, according to its understanding of UB. But if we pass the code in on the command line instead, set the page to executable, <coughs> so that the compiler can't tell what code is in there, we get signed integer overflow showing up, because it could be defined. And uh, this is not quite watertight because an adversarial compiler could still check that X is not in max before that line and uh, delete your hard drive or something. So last, let's look at quake fast inverse square root. This is another thing that we can unundefined. So this is UB. Compilers are pretty generous and they will run this for you anyway, but we can check that it is UB by running it in a uh, const expr context. So we can add our functions around the casts and um, pass in code from the command line again. And now the, the compiler is required to do this because it, uh, it could be defined. Our function could return an int object and then a float object. Now you might complain that there's a performance issue since these uh, square roots now make function calls, but we can address that by having the taint function that we pass in delete its own call instruction. So here, it takes a little more assembly. This marks the page as writable. It goes up using the stack pointer and then overwrites the call instruction. And then to be a good citizen, um, writes the page as not writable again. And by the way, we aren't checking argc here because this whole thing is UB. So don't worry about that. But um, anyway, this is this disassembly for the square root function. After, uh, or here are the call instructions highlighted. After you run the function the first time, they've been replaced with move instructions and no ops. So that, that will address the performance issue. And we have uh, unundefined the behavior. Now the compiler has to generate working fast inverse square root code. So in conclusion, adding a branch to make the defile of the the behavior sometimes defined doesn't work because the compiler can still show it's not defined in the other code paths. Um, and the, uh, some other strategies where the compiler is not 
aware of the code that causes the UB at the appropriate time. Some of those can work for type planning situations, but signed integer overflow is still an open problem. And I'm interested in any other ideas that you guys have to do this for more UB cases and even less invasively. Thank you.